YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, uh, where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can just send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some really, really good questions like we always do. As a matter of fact, let's hear them. First question came from my boy, Droid209. He said, that's my coach. Morning, evening, or good night, Uncle Grave. Hope all is well. I hope you got your fresh batch of just for men to get them gray hairs covered. I know I did. All right, real talk, though. I know Coach Johnny Boy has been messing up. Coach Harv is honestly under a lot of pressure nowadays. I feel like every year since the decline of Joe Flacco, Johnny Boy has been on the hot seat. I still trust that John will get us to the bowl. Might not be this year. But it will be next. Uh, John Harbaugh is one of the best football coaches in the league. Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, John Harbaugh, in that order. I don't have a question. I just want to remind the Flock Nation to have big trust. We have three games left to turn it around. Three games that are winnable. This game taught me that we are winners. We just got to make the right calls. Be breezy, Unc. So we're winners, but we got to make the right calls. But we lost. And we've lost three games in a row. Shouldn't winners already be making the right calls? And winners win. Ravens right now, they are not winners. They've won more than they've lost, which is great. Um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, moral victories are, are cool, but not cool at the same time. And I think that's... Looking for just trying to find a moral victory because I've been seeing it a lot. Oh, yeah, we should be proud of this team, and we are proud of this team. Oh, having everybody hurt like that and running with the Packers like that great, great, but that doesn't get it done. It's not enough. You still lost, you lost, and we know football's next man up. You lost. And what, what, what's happened when the team's been fully healthy? Especially a 14 and 2 year. Like, man, that, that just, oof. What happened there? You had everybody. So, is Harbaugh a good coach? Harbaugh, Harbaugh, he's a good coach. Certainly got his deficiencies. Every coach does. Um, but with Harbaugh, I just, <sighs> getting a decision making, man. It's just been head scratching. Um, and again, I feel like you, you I feel like you you gave him all these shout outs, all this praise, great coach, top three, and you said who Belichick, Andy Reid, and Harbaugh in that order. But then that last part, you said this game taught me that we are winners, we just gotta make the right calls. Hmm. That's an interesting way to end that. Next question came from my boy Eric. He said, Yo, Engraven, hope the fam is doing well. As you've probably noticed, the coaching has been extremely questionable, to say the least. Two contrasting questions back to back. But anyway, he said, Do you think the Ravens should fire Harbaugh? And in a situation Harbaugh does get fired, who do you think will be the best replacement for the Ravens? Personally, I think all the coaches will get a get out of jail free card with all the injuries. But injuries aren't an excuse for the bad play calling. Anyways, I appreciate everything you do for the flock. And just like all of our kicking team in close games. <laughs> I'm out. Oh, I love this one. Um, I love how he ended that and how he worded everything, too. Um, do I think Ravens should fire Harbaugh? Oh, boy. It's, it's, it's always a really good question when somebody asks this because um, with offensive coordinators, there's always a complaint of offensive coordinators under Harbaugh. Nine times out of ten, it's always a complaint over him because Ravens offense just, it can be crazy sometimes. It can drive you insane. Um, but the common denominator is is always John Harbaugh. Um, John Harbaugh, good leader. Uh, he is a uh, team coach. I mean, he's a, a player's coach. Players love him. They love the energy. They love the vibe. Um, but Harbaugh... As far as the decision making, um, the the hirings, the, the the staff that gets put together. Um, now, one thing that they, one thing that these guys do, I, I feel like with, with Harbaugh, they wouldn't even have to fire him. They just let him coach for, let him coach every game for three and a half quarters. Then let that last the, the, the last half of the fourth quarter, let somebody, we got to bring in a closer. 
we got to bring in a closer. Because something's got to give, man. Something's got to give. So who, who can be that closer for us? Who, who, could, who could close these games out for us? If, if they could do that, you ain't got to even get rid of Harbaugh. But in the case they did get rid of Harbaugh, um, I would just say an offensive-minded guy. Because I would just really want Lamar's potential to be reached and for Lamar to be in a situation. Because whenever he signs his deal, I want him to be in the best situation for him. So if they were to fire Harbaugh, I would just want somebody to who, who is really going to just make this offense explode. Next question came from Anthony. He said, what's going on? Hope all is well. If he hasn't been signed for the Ravens or any other team by the time you see this, with a thin cornerback room, do you think the Ravens should take a chance on Bashar Breeland? Yeah, for sure. Like, I said this in another video. I don't care if he's a zone corner, if he's a band corner. I don't know what he is. I don't know his game like that. But I don't even care. Ravens literally have, they are paper thin, less than, less than paper thin at the cornerback position. They, like, are down to pass their last. They are in the negative balance right now when it comes to their cornerback room. So it could not hurt at all. Next question came from my boy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? The Ravens are on a three-game losing streak, and the hot topic has been the terrible decision-making in crucial situations. Harbaugh and his coordinators have been making decisions that's analytics-driven, and it's costing us huge games. Here's the kicker, though. On the other teams, these last few games will get the head coach fired, but Harbaugh is probably safe because he has a wild card in his back pocket. The GM EDC is the one who implemented the whole analytics system in place when he took Took over for Ozzy as GM, and EDC is the one enforcing the analytics philosophy on the team. So if the owner wanted to make a move, he would have to fire EDC too. Because remember, the owner said after the 2018 and 17 season that they put a five-year succession plan in place for EDC to take over as GM starting in 2019. Just a little food for thought. Just curious to hear thoughts on my takes. Um, and hashtag Ravens Nation. I EDC ain't going anywhere, and I don't. The, the thing about EDC. He makes the football decision. He creates the roster. He creates the roster, um, has a say-so in hirings and firings for uh, their staff, their front office and whatnot. Their coaching staff, I mean, excuse me, because he is the front office. He's part of the front office. Um, I don't think Eric DaCosta has been doing a bad job at all. He put together an amazing, amazing, amazing roster this year. But injuries took over. Injuries literally took over from top to bottom of the roster. Every single position, players everywhere, hurt, 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 hurt. He did a good job. Um, coaching staff, a little different story there. But Eric DaCosta did a good job. I think Eric DaCosta, Eric DaCosta he's, he's fine. He ain't got nothing to worry about right now. Um, but I, one thing I do wonder about is, it, would he put that pressure on Harbaugh? Would he put that pressure on his next door neighbor? Would he put that pressure on his friend? Would he do that? And that, I, I don't think he would. And I mean, I can't say that what Hobbs is doing would get other coaches fired. If they had bad records, then it would. But he's had I guess, some, some leeway in his eyes with his record, even though Ravens are out of the playoffs as of right now. Um, hopefully they can win these next three games and get in. But we'll see when we get there. Um... But he, yeah, he had, he, I guess he felt he had a little bit of leeway with a lot of this decision making. Um, but it, it, would, it would only get other coaches fired if they had bad records. But yeah, Harbaugh, he's, right now he's still in the clear. So he ain't close to getting fired. He ain't on his way to being fired. Like, they, I would be extremely shocked if, like, I just, there's nothing right now with this, this season that would that the Ravens will fire Harbaugh for nothing, and again, like you said, he got that legit get out of jail free card uh, with the injuries. Oh, and but you also said that EDC implemented the analytics, which he did talk about when in his introductory press conference. He said, "Hey, I'm all about them analytics." So, um, yeah, that that does bode well in Harbaugh's favor. I never even really thought about that. Um, the fact that EDC was uh, he he's down with them analytics. And you know Harbaugh is too. And I mean, Harbaugh gonna do whatever he gotta do to keep his job, man. Straight up. He gonna do what he gotta do to keep his job. Like my, like my boy uh, Brodney said, shout out to Jose and Brodney from Lunch Break Hot Take. He said, one of John Harbaugh's best attributes is self-preservation. I will never forget that quote because it was amazing. Harbaugh gonna do what he gotta do to keep his job. Who wouldn't? 
Who wouldn't? So he's going to ride with a GM. GM say he down with analytics. Harbaugh going to be like, oh, yeah, I am Mr. Analytics. Let's hire a whole analytics team. And they did that. A lot of questions about the coaching staff. Next one came from my boy Joshua. He said, should the Ravens rehaul the coaches and not the players for the future? What's up, Raven? Following up from my last question, I hope people see what I'm saying. Ravens literally have the dumbest set of coaches in the league, besides Wink. From GM to head coach to coordinators to conditioning trainers, the Ravens are an organization that operates on extremely low IQ. But they have great players. Uh, this is my question. Normally, when you talk about rebuilding, you think about rebuilding the roster of players. But should the Ravens overhaul their coaching staff instead to give these players a chance? I believe Harbaugh's regime based on all heart and no brains, which is why they rely heavily on, on analytics because they can't think for themselves. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, I believe uh, that I believe that regime will hold this franchise back from another Super Bowl. And he said, hashtag free Lamar. Woo. Boy, um, because he did say this in his last question. He said he feels like the Ravens are all hard and no brain. So my guy Josh is very consistent. Oh, but he said from GM to head coach to coordinators to conditioning, like everybody. Um, again, I'm not with the, with the analytics thing. Um, I'm not. Well, y'all know I'm not a big analytics guy. I'm not a big fan of analytics um, because I feel like you just. You're looking at a computer like I feel like analytics just it could take away from the game. It reminds me of fantasy football. It just takes away from the from the game so much. Um, but with analytics, you just you're going based off of these numbers and probability rates and success rates and da da da. da but you got to actually just be watching the game. Look at the game. Look how your players are playing, and just you got you you really got to think. I feel like all right. Show me the analytics on this fourth down. Show me what the computer says. Show me what the computer says. Show me what these numbers say. But I just, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like analytics may be a little overrated a bit. Um, and hey, maybe there's something that I don't know about analytics. Maybe it's something that we, we don't understand or know about analytics. I, I'm not ruling that out as well. But I feel like you, you got to have a feel for the game, man. You, you got to be in rhythm and be in sync with the game and not just these numbers on a, on a computer. So as far as your question, should the Ravens do a, 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 just an overhaul of everything? Mm. But you said GM too. I, I don't think that EDC should be, that he should be uh, fired or whatnot. Because again, EDC, yeah, he is very analytical. That's his thing, analytics. Um... But it's Harbaugh that got to make the football decision. But like we talked about in the previous question from my guy Howard, yeah, Harbaugh going to be on board with them analytics because EDC on board with them analytics. So you don't want to clash with the GM. Um, mm. Overhaul to the coaching staff, I can see that. But as far as to the GM, no. And that's, it's, 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 this is very... Tricky, but I do see what you're saying because the follow from your previous question to this question, and then the way that you worded everything too, uh, and you talked about because with them analytics, it's it's not them thinking for themselves, it's them going off of them numbers, and I was oh like oh, wow, there's a big yikes right there. Um, mm. Something's got to give, man. Some some has got to give. Because even there have been times even when the Ravens won, and a lot of their decision making is just like, whoa, what's going on? What happened? But they end up not paying for it in the long run because they end up getting the win. But we just knew we we had been saying it for the longest. Ravens, they got to step this stuff up. Even when they were winning, we talked about how you got to step stuff up, cause. We just know things are going to get harder. They're only going to get harder. And the Ravens, they continue doing the same thing. And now they, they lost three in a row. Um, they lost the last, uh, I forget what, how many out of how many games they lost for the past however many games. I, don't, I ain't got the analytics right now in my head to do those numbers. Wasn't this factory built for him? Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, my guy, what's going on? Hope all is well. And now we dive into today's topic. This was sent before the Packers game, by the way. It probably won't mean anything, but we'll see. 
Um, while we often hear Lamar is the reason the Ravens are relevant, Lamar is the reason why Hobbs has a job, Lamar is the reason for this and for that. Now, I'm no anti-Lamar guy or nothing, nothing but love for my QB1, but help me out here. Wasn't this machine built for Lamar Jackson? I mean, it's only right he succeeds, right? Greg Roman has had success with similar quarterbacks and even got to the big dance with one of them. While I do know Roman's time is nearing its expiration date, I can't completely ignore or diminish his role. Yes, it's old now, but I have to credit him where everyone else says it's all LJ. Lamar could have been successful anywhere he went, but would the team? We know his arm wasn't close to precise early on. Would he have the same production elsewhere? Greg's run scheme are still some of the greatest, and I got to say he deserves some credit for that part. Next is where he failed to. If Lamar Jackson landed in Jacksonville, Chicago, Jets, he may very well be successful, but he may not win that MVP. What I'm saying is he failed to a top-tier organization known for winning, while Hobbs missed the playoffs a couple times in his tenure for more than, uh, more than none he was in. Can't say the same for the other organizations, and they wouldn't be built specifically for him. So while he is the engine to this car, what's an engine without the rest of the car? Lamar is already a legend, and I'm sure when he receives his gold jacket, there shall be a nod to Giro, Hobbs, and the whole Ravens organization for giving him a chance and believing in him. Remember, 31 NFL teams passed on him. 32. Well... No, yeah, 31, because Ravens, uh, they were in the first round twice, cause they, but they got Hayden Hurst. They could have had Lamar then, but they got Hayden Hurst. Um, so, yeah, great points. Uh, all, all great points. And, yeah, you, you got to credit. Um, yeah, Harbaugh gets some of the credit, Giro, um, and uh, just the, the, the whole organization. You're right. They are, uh, they have done a lot more winning than losing uh, in Harbaugh's Harbaugh, Harbaugh's tenure here as a head coach, um, obviously got the Super Bowl, which was great, great times. Uh, but they, uh, Giro, uh, talked about him that he's he was a great introdu introductory uh, offensive coordinator for Lamar Jackson. Uh, his run schemes, like you said, they are amazing. Um, the way that the Ravens ran the ball and the success that they had running the ball was just great. Uh, and when you can run the ball like that, like that, oh boy, you um, it just makes life easier for the quarterback, uh, and that allows him to allows less pressure to be put on him and him to just have a higher chance for success. Because if the quarterback just not say that he couldn't, or any rookie quarterback couldn't, or second year quarterback couldn't, but if you're just coming out throwing, 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 throwing and with no run game, that's that's bad for any quarterback. Um, so yeah, that 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 that, that was good. Uh, but yeah, Hobbs, Hobbs, Lamar did save Hobbs' job. Now, with Lamar, I, I do feel like he could have had success at a lot of places, but the Ravens, yeah, he, he came to a team, yeah, that has, they, they know how to win their winners. They're like, us as Ravens fans, we spoiled but I like how my guy, um, Jose, uh, shout out to Lunch Break Hot Take again. But I like how my guy, Jose, had put it that we as Ravens fans, it's not even so much that we, well, we are spoiled, but um, we have expectations. For us, from all, everything that we've seen over the years, we have expectations. And if your team, if you've seen how successful your team can be, uh, how successful they have been, then it's like that, that's what you want them to continue doing. And you just, you want them to win. And you want them to maintain that success. You want them to increase that success. So when whenever people say Raven fans are spoiled and they're, da, 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 no, yeah, it's just that they, they, they know what success is like and they want that for the team. That's it. So with, with Lamar, yeah, if he would have went to the Jaguars, it's not a very very well run team. It wouldn't have been the same. Well, we'll never know, but it might not have been the same. Same with the Jets. I mean, you could say a bunch of other franchises, but there are also some teams that if he would have went there, they are very well run. If he would have went to the Saints, oof, boy, Chiefs, yikes, Patriots, um, who else? Think of off the top of my head, uh, but yeah, he he could have had some success in some other places as well. But Ravens, it, it worked out for him for sure. Worked out for them for sure, and, and it's, it's it's been a nice relationship. He he brought a, a just this energy uh, to the to the city. Uh, Lamar came through. He changed the game. He really changed the game. He changed the NFL. 
was talking to my guy JT the other day, and we was talking about this, and um, he was mentioning how Lamar even got like different guys drafted. He got different guys drafted, so it's like, yeah, he he certainly changed the game for sure. Um, so oh no no no, that was my guy, uh, not JT, it was my guy SG Skeptical. He was saying that that Lamar like he's because of him, guys like like the Browns they drafted Jock. That's for Lamar. That's for LJ. So it's just that impact is just crazy, man. It's crazy. So um. But yeah, you got to give kudos to the coaching staff too. They played a part. They had to change everything around for Lamar on the fly. They did a good job of it. And then in the second season, they really had to really just go all in and as far as uh, the offense. Personnel, they were like, oh, no, we're going to hold back a little bit. We, you know, we, don't, we ain't ready yet. We don't trust you yet. I was like, okay. He, he wanted to prove himself. Okay, oh, cool, fine. He did. 2020, all right, you ready to go all in with the team and with the personnel and stuff? They're like, oh, no, no, we're good. No, we're not. But anyway, uh, but yeah, you made some good points, man. Appreciate you, there. Last question on this episode came from my boy Greg from BMO. He said, hey, Greg, I didn't expect a one-point game. I expected the Packers to blow out the Ravens. So I'm just so proud of this team's nature to just keep fighting. Our third straight week with questionable two-point calls. Different situation with the Browns game, but the Packers game was similar to the Steelers game in that, in that moment. In the Steelers game, I agreed with the call, but I disagree versus the Packers. I always want to try to win, but no Lamar and the D just started to step up on the last drive versus Rodgers. Kicked the extra point there, and it hurts more after seeing... Or after after the game, seeing on Twitter that Hollywood looked open there on a two point try. Mm. Pain, pain, pain. He said, I also disagree with the first drive of the game that Ravens went for it on fourth down. Kick the field goal there. It's early in the game and the ball was not on the one or two yard line. And I just don't get it. Those points would have helped a lot. Harbaugh, I love him. Hope he's coaching for a long time. Still with the Ravens, but he needs to look at himself and evaluate everything because I just don't get these calls. He might say analytics, but analytics say Ravens are bad this season. <laughs> Let me run that back. He might say analytics, but analytics say Ravens are bad this season on two-point plays, so try for the tie there. Big game in Cincinnati next, I think. In my opinion, if they don't win this, they might miss the playoffs, which I still want to happen. Because if Lamar can get going, anything is still possible. Oh, I think he meant I, I, I still don't want to happen. Um, so do you see this team still getting to the playoffs? <sighs> Man, I, it's tough. It's very, very tough. Based off of where they are right here, right now, no. But um, you just, you never know what you're going to get with this team. Even though I knew against the Packers, I knew we were going to get a great game. I, and I, like, I just knew they were going to win. But they could have won, they had some chances to, but some decisions that were made. Anyway, um, I don't know, man. You just you, you never know what you're going to get on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, you With the decisions that have been being made, especially over the past three weeks, all these two-point tries, um, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. I, I can't even give you a straight answer. If I had to pick one, yes or no, based off right here, right now, I'll say no. Um, but Ravens, they, they like making it crazy at the very end, like they always do. Browns lost tonight when I'm recording this. They lost against the Raiders. Um, so that helps keep them away a little bit. Uh, we play Bengals and that's a big one. That's a big one because they, they, they got to make it happen. Like you said, because that's a division game. Bengals are in the lead in the division right now. Everybody's so close in the division, though. It's super close. So, anyway, he said, I think Bengals and Steelers, they might need both for it. Rams is likely an L, and the reason I say they might need a win versus Steelers, because first, Steelers are still in the hunt for the North, and for Cincinnati, who I believe is the best team uh, in the AFC North, I think Bengals got a better division record than the Ravens. And if they can stay one within one game, even if Bengals lose next week when the Ravens and Steelers uh Oh, if Bengals lose next week, then Ravens and Steelers is that much more important since Bengals will still have that tiebreaker. Hope for the best for the rest of the season. Very cool to see Tony Jefferson back versus the Packers. Go Ravens. <laughs>